Good afternoon and welcome to WATD's Powerful Women Revealed, created and hosted by Nicole Perry. You're invited to enjoy an ongoing series of personal and educational discussions with a variety of women that want to educate, inspire, and bring awareness to the community. These women all have a powerful mission and appreciate the opportunity to share their stories, milestones, and successes with you. Here's your host, Nicole Perry. Good afternoon and welcome to Powerful Women Revealed. I'm your host, Nicole Perry, and my co-host today, thank you for helping me coin that, is Francine Fontana, and you can go to FontanaCoaching.com for more information. She's been here a couple of times. She is a transformational life coach, and welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me. You are a great co-host, a great guest, a great coach, a great person to hang around. There's so many great things about you. Oh, and thank you. we're going to talk more about coaching. In the last show, uh, you were here a couple weeks ago, we were really talking about ego. Mm -hmm. So we're going to dive more into ego today. Um, before we even do that, let's talk more about making decisions from a spiritual way because a lot of times people make decisions for you know how they're going to transform their life what they're going to do differently how they're going to change and they have another person they have to sort of bounce ideas off of because a lot of people are in a relationship right mm -hmm. but it's not just about making basic decisions about is this going to pay my bills is this the right decision for me to change this job or go for this dream life that I want? It's more about spiritual, basing it on, basing your decisions on your spiritual needs. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit more about that. And is, is that something that you bring up like right away with your clients? Is that something that you talk about throughout? It is throughout, but it starts in the beginning of when I first start working with someone because one of the first steps into what I help my clients do is create a clear vision for what it is that they would love to have in their life. You know, what it is, if you could have and be and do anything you wanted, what would you be experiencing in, in your life? And so that question also ties in with the ego because a lot of times people say that the first things that they say that they want in their life is just all they're all ego based right which is a boat a or boat, physical physical things or money or all of those things which it doesn't you could still have those things but then also mm -hmm. but but why so one of the questions that i hear all the time is when i ask okay what would you love to have and be and do in your life i get oh i would love to be independently wealthy so I don't have to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. So then, okay, so, but what is the deeper? Because we're, we're, we don't want money. Money is just paper, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't really want to. Money is energy. Well, but, but, but when people think of money, they think about, they don't want money mm -hmm. because money itself is just paper. But mm -hmm. money is also energy mm -hmm. in terms of it gives you free. It's a representation. Money is a representation of freedom. Because if you have money, you can do anything you want, you know, sort of. Yeah, it's fuel. Think of that it's fuel. Exactly. So, so, that it, so then, okay, so if you had all the money that you want to have, if you, then, were, if you were independently wealthy, then <clears throat> what would you do with your life then? Yes. But then, so those are the things that are, is the vision for your life, not I want money. Yeah, and and so and so in, in I want to be rich. I want to be famous. You know, I want to have a you know a, yeah. a five bedroom house, or I want to have yeah. whatever. It's like you know, but but those things are great, and 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 obviously you can achieve them. But but in terms of finding a, a more fulfilled, richer life, is you know what are the components of that? Is happiness? It's fulfillment. It's having a sense of purpose. It's service towards others, you know. And so, those are the things that I work with clients to really get to the core root of that. Because you can live in a beautiful house, you can have the boat, and you still you can be empty and not fulfilled and not really not really live the life of your dreams. Mm. You know, it could be financially the life of your dreams, but it's a superficial life and that doesn't really bring you ultimately, you know, happiness. So you help your clients ultimately let's just sit down and if you already had all the money in the world and all of that fuel and all that energy, mm -hmm. let's all let's skip to the next part and discover what it is. And you almost 
I mean, I've learned from so many different people that um, that you have to imagine it already existing. Yes. Yes. And that is part of the, 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 the process is you have to first of all, have a clear vision of what it is that you want. And in part of that, you use your creative imagination to help you come up with what it is that it would be in your life, right? Mm. And then with that is, okay, so if I already have all of that right now, then w what kind of person would I be right now if I were living that life? Mm. And, then you, and then part of the work is just every day live your life even in the absence of experiencing that in the concrete level of your life, you have to live your life as if you already had it. Yeah. So, for example, if you say, like, um, I want to, um, you know, have a successful radio show, for example, mm -hmm. if, you know, if that was your dream. And then, okay, so what does a successful radio show host do? Like, who is that person? I don't know who you I know? am. <laughs> So I'm asking myself those <laughs> questions every single day. <laughs> I know. No, but, but if, if you see yourself in the most successful version of yourself, like mm. who would you be? Yeah. What would your routine be like yeah. in the morning? You know, what, or, or how would you treat other people? You yeah. know, uh, what kind of energy would you be having? Like if, what, kind of, what kind of energy would you be living in if, say, if you're driving to work to record your show like are you, are you super happy are you excited like that is the, a different energy than the person who is driving to a job they hate yes you know so so then so even if you even if right now you're working to driving towards your job that you don't like but you want to be the successful radio show host mm -hmm. then as you're driving to work that you don't like then but put yourself in the energy in the vibration of i am driving myself to this dream job that I have, I'm hosting a show and yeah. I'm happy, I'm fulfilled. Yeah. And then just live in that energy. And that is how you attract yourself and you put yourself in positions and in situations and, you, and, and then opportunities show up in your life that you wouldn't otherwise see. And we talked about this last time that this is not, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it's your ideal client, that person that just doesn't wanna get out of bed. Mm -hmm. But maybe they are. Because that person that doesn't want to get out of bed, but they get out of bed and they're and they're dragging their feet every day. You can hear it shuffling on the floor like they can't even pick up their feet. They're so, you know, oh, woe is me. This is, you know, my life. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I could just imagine there are people like this in the world. Mm -hmm. And and they're not really putting they're not putting themselves in the driver's seat. Like, mm -hmm. really? Literally, like you said, picture yourself when you're driving to work, driving to that dream job. Yeah. You know, like yeah. they're, they're, they're not really, I, I just imagine there are so many people in the world that just don't even know what it is. Yeah. And, and, and that is the thing, too. It's like, and, and I think it's like if you have one or two days or a stretch of time where you don't feel well and you feel like you need rest, then it's okay to accept what is in your life and kind yeah. of process that, but not if you're doing that for years and dragging. And and the thing is, I think and, a lot but of... But if you're doing that for years and dragging, yeah. this is like the perfect opportunity. Yeah. Hello, wake yourself up. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it usually means that you're just not doing enough of the things you love doing in your life because if you were really doing things that you love yeah you wouldn't be dragging yourself out of bed you need to find out what that is and 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 that's what i tell uh you know clients in, initially when they don't quite know what the vision like what is it you know for sometimes it's for like let's say for vocation sometimes mm -hmm. people don't really know what it is that they would love to do yeah then it's like okay so in the absence of knowing what it is and i think we talked about this uh, last time i was here but in the absence of truly knowing what that one thing that is going to spark love and joy in you but come up with something because even something yes. is better than nothing and, and then, the something and then is something, taking the little step it's taking a little step forward and then another path is going to show up once you do that a little bit yeah and so it's in the app because you know if, if you do nothing and if you spend your whole day in bed 
with your covers the over your head. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome, yeah. right? Who said yeah. that? Yeah. I, I can't remember. I can't remember. Somebody but, smart and old and probably did. And I the think. thing is, you don't get a choice on whether or not you're creating a life. You yeah. don't have a choice, but you can choose what it is that you're creating. So, like I was saying, if you if you spend a whole day in bed with the covers of your head, what you created is a day in bed with the head over your head. Versus if you choose to, okay, I'm, I don't know what it is that I'm going to do, but I'm going to do this one thing that it's not quite it, but, but it kind of has something that I like. It's a teeny you, little spark. Yeah. It's a teeny tiny little spark, yeah. and it's going to get me, and it's going to light the way. Exactly. Into that direction. All right. Exactly. On that note, we have to go to break. You're amazing. I could listen to you talk all day. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> you have a beautiful voice. <laughs> you, you can go to FontanaCoaching.com for more information and to connect with Francine and fill out that contact form to get it started. She also has a Dream Builder Toolkit, uh, which we can talk about too if you want um i hope you stay with us you're listening to powerful women revealed the place to go and the place to be right here on 95.9 WATD. are you getting the support you need to move your business forward the perfect group for you might just be powerful women rise we are a motivational mastermind for women who are serious about transforming their businesses and missions at each meeting we educate ourselves on topics relevant to the entrepreneur today and we gain incredible support from a team of professionals with diverse experiences and wisdom so how do you want to be supported over the next 12 months visit powerfulwomenrise.com to register or get started today and we are back. You're listening to Powerful Women Reveals. You were talking. I don't know if that's going to come through. Oh, I hope not. You were talking. <laughs> we were talking over the break about COVID. Um, <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Powerful Women Revealed. I'm your host, Nicole Perry. My guest is Francine Fontana. And before we went to the break, we were talking about that little spark of light. Mm -hmm. And this particular song I played is called How Low by, I don't know, Heartless. Um, I think I can say Bastards. Yes. I think that's a, um, a technically a, a word in the dictionary that you can say on the air. So uh, what a great song. And they were talking about, you know, how long, how low can you go and all these great lyrics in there. And when I was watching the video, there was all these visuals about the trash that we are creating on mm. our planet. And even if you saw so what I'm getting at now that you said that little spark, if you just find that little spark, there must be something that you feel passionate about. And especially when it comes to the planet or, you know, reducing how many water bottles we create and all of these crazy things that, you know, I'm learning that we need to change and fix and shift and not buy anymore and use our wallets and all those great things. But mm -hmm. there must be something that you can sort of gain a spark from and transition, maybe something part time. Mm -hmm. Like you said earlier, take a class. I think you were talking about that last time. Um, take a class or something or, you know, really then sh it take take your time to shift it into your dream life, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's just, I just said a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. But it is, it's it's about taking, and even just, like you say, like taking a class. It's like, if you don't know, then just try different things and then mm. see, and, and, and what you're noticing is just your own energy and your whole vibrancy. You know, if you're doing something that you love that sparks joy in you, you're gonna feel your energy field and your heart like expand. So mm. what you're looking for is feelings of expansion, feelings of feeling light within your body, you know, mm. and then if you're doing something that feels constricting, or if you feel a tightness in your chest, or your or you're like your shoulders heavy, then those are feel though that's me that means you're going in the wrong direction. Yeah, you know, so the same thing, like you're driving to work, and you feel constricted, tight, that means you're you're not in the right direction for what is best for you. you and know? basically your true essence. Now, what it's do you... It's been crushed. <laughs> it's been crushed. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> if, no, I mean, if, if, if you're living a life where you're unhappy and you feel a lot of constriction, you know, with relationships, with job, with anything, that means you. it's like your life source, your life force is being... You know, you put diminished, in diminishing and because it's just it's just too much, and it's like you're not going in the right direction of where you can really flourish as a as a as a human being. Mm. You know, and you're not going going to be able to fully experience what it's like to be you, genuinely you, in this life. If you spend your life 
suppressing it. Suppressing it, exactly. Yeah. And I I, I mean, there is no better time than now. Mm -hmm. Like, like really and i'm i'm really learning so much right now i'm just learning more about the mind and how it works and how our thoughts create our reality mm-hmm. and all of these interesting things and i i'm really grabbing this concept that now creates our past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a proverb that says, I think it's like a Japanese or Chinese proverb that says, the best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago. Yeah. The next best time is now. Is now. Because if you wait for 10 more years, you know. Right? And, And it's not easy for people, because everybody, when you think about past, most people think about what's, was happening or what did happen or when they were 10 Mm -hmm. or when they were seven or when they were 18 or Mm -hmm. whatever Mm -hmm. but you're we're creating our past constantly every single day well it's sort of like what you just said it's in the past yeah and then uh bob proctor has this great uh, oh what i just said just now is in the past past. okay yeah i got you now (laughs) and bob proctor has this great saying that you know i I would you know those hourglasses yes so the sand on top is sort of like you know your your future. the The sand that's on the bottom is, is your the past. past, and then what you like where you have to focus on is right where that narrow passage. That one teeny tiny that little is green. The, that is the present, <laughs> and then yeah. the past is you know the, the the future hasn't happened yet. The past already it's done. You have to be in the present moment. You have yeah. to focus in the present because, like you said, that that's how you're creating your life. It's moment by moment. The decisions that you're making right now, the decisions that you're making today with your yeah. life, that's how you create your life. That's how you focus on creating a life that you love is making decisions every morning that does this align with you know, does this decision right now align with the life I want to live? So, you, you know, um, with your book, uh, mm. you know, with the love diet. So it, it's sort of the same. You can apply this to anything. So uh, with if you if you think about, OK, I want to be healthy and I want to eat healthy foods. They're going to support my goal of being healthy. So every minute, every every time that you're making a decision about, you know, if you're in the present mm-hmm. and focusing on that to create a life you love, then, OK, so this decision that I'm making right now to eat this next meal, mm-hmm. what is the decision that is going to support me in the future or in the life that I'm creating for myself? Not that I want to eventually create in the future, that I'm creating right now. And so if you have a choice between a burger yeah. or some saute, lightly sauteed veggies, then what decision right now is going to support me in that? Yeah, I love that. You know, I didn't even have the vision. Like, I just, I'm like an action gal. Like, I just jump in and mm-hmm. look for the net later. Mm-hmm. And I w- that's what I did when I was writing the book. And I, it took me 10 months to change my mindset mm-hmm. because the mind is, is so, um, it's, it's like our minds are stamped with all this information that some of it's not even facts. No, it's programming. <laughs> yeah. It's programming and it's things that you learn from, like we're talking about last show, it was things that you learn from culture, from family members, from just a lot of false beliefs of what, it's just things that are quite honestly not even true. Not even true. A lot of times. And and, and beliefs that you have about yourself, about your place in the world, about what the world is like. Yeah. And and we just operate within those programs we know we don't even know and it's okay to think about the future Mm -hmm. like i choose not to buy a water bottle you know from Mm -hmm. the shelf Mm -hmm. because i don't want to put my money into the products that i know are not good for the environment Mm -hmm. so it's okay in the present moment to think about the future yeah right yeah and every teeny tiny little step is going to help us get to a better future. Yeah, because the future is the vision of what you want for yourself, mm. for the country, for the, for the, for the world, yeah. for the environment. We have to think beyond ourselves. We have to mm-hmm. be selfish, but we also have to think beyond ourselves too, don't you think? I, I don't think we have to necessarily. We have to go to break, yeah. but 
I I just feel like, you know, you know, I I want to care about the planet long before I'm gone. Yeah. Like it, I want to care while I'm here. Yeah. And, and the thing is, you don't want to be selfish. You want to be your true self. Because when you are being your true self and we can talk about this, it's like it's actually what's best for you. It's what's best for everyone else and it's yes. what's best for, for for the world. Your true essence. Yeah. Yeah. And, and mine is caring. Mm -hmm. Like that's part of who I am is to care. Yeah. So I can't help it. You know, <laughs> and you're being true to yourself when you're following that, and, yeah. when, you're t and you, when you're taking actions in your life that are aligned with that. Yeah. All right. Well, we have to go to break. Um, you can go to FontanaCoaching.com for more information and to connect with Francine. Uh, you're listening to Powerful Women Revealed right here on 95.9 WATD. A grapefruit diet is not realistic. A love diet is personal. For over two and a half years, Nicole Perry has been writing her debut book, I Am On A Love Diet, and it's officially available on Amazon right now. Nicole's debut book, I Am On A Love Diet, is Nicole's story of how she focused on feeding herself love for 365 days and shares her very candid, raw, and personal thoughts about the dieting industry. Nicole's book is nonfiction but reads like a beach novel. Get your copy today by visiting ilovemydiet.com. You know, my book is sprinkled with a few thoughts around anxiety and depression, and it's because food plays a huge part in our mental health. As a suicide attempt survivor, I felt even more of a calling to share my thoughts around suicide prevention because while I was writing my debut book, Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain both took their own lives. Now that we are emerging from COVID-19 and resuming our work lives as best we can, I decided to roll out a new campaign called Grow to Give to support the Plymouth County Suicide Prevention Coalition. Invest in yourself, your business, and your community at Powerful Women Rise as we grow to give together, giving 10% of all membership dues to the Plymouth County Suicide Prevention Coalition. Claim your business category C in one of our teams today by visiting PowerfulWomenRise.com and click Get Started. And we are back. You're listening to Powerful Women Reveal. That was Heat by Kelly Clarkson. Love it. Such a great song. You know, I forget the lines, but make me feel heat from you, baby. Make me feel weak for you, baby. <laughs> Something like that. But, you know, we all want that little spark of fire inside of us. Mm -hmm. I think if you don't, you know, figure out why. Ask yourself why. Now, we were talking about our true self. Mm-hmm. And um, and this is the perfect segue to mm -hmm. go deeper into ego and fear, mm -hmm. because I think I, I mean, I'm I know I speak from experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am fearful sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's ego and the fear gets in the way of stepping outside of what we know. Mm -hmm. Right. The yeah. only thing certain in life is uncertainty. Yes, and death. <laughs> yeah. and, de well, <laughs> and the uncertainty about when you're going to die. Exactly. Um, so, so the fear gets in the way. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning that fear is really ego. Mm -hmm. And I'm also learning that fear does not exist. Yeah. Well, so, so this is the thing, though. Our, bo our um, bodies, our um, central nervous system, it's actually wired for fear. Because that's think about it like back in the, the you know dinosaurs were around like you ne we needed fear to, to actually be keep safe. us alive you keep we, us alive yes exactly so so part of fear is just you know like this fight or flight response that we feel that it's actually fear of something tragic happening to us but right I now. also I'm, I'm also but, reading that man created fear. Yeah, but, 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 but that's the whole thing. Like, it's like our nervous system is wired for fear to keep us alive. And, but then, uh, but think about this, the life that we live right now, there's, it's like we're not, we're not living in danger of being eaten by any, you know, dinosaur or anything like that. So yeah. we're pretty safe in our lives, but our bodies read things that we feel unsure about, you know, as fear or, you know, uh, Failure is another thing that people are afraid of. And, or, and it's usually people are afraid of like their demise or, you know, or, or complete failure in terms of not having a legacy for their lives. Or even you know just I mean? simple things going through life. Oh, I burped in public. 
oh, I said yeah. something stupid. Oh, like mm-hmm. silly things that we're putting so much pressure on ourselves. Yeah, no, we are. And, and so, so this is the thing, though, like the structure of like the ego. And because the, so, it, you know, we we are luminous light beings so i i believe that we have luminous light 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 beings having a human experience you know we are a soul having this human experience and so within us we have you know i call it like essence it's a term for it so we're like our true essence of who we truly are which is our soul which is our soul our true self whatever you want to call it people call different names but it's like the, the 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 essence of who you truly are and uh, I follow the work of uh, Richard Schwartz, and he calls it the internal family system. Mm-hmm. And within that, it's so the description of the self, of being a- in essence. So when you're living your life, being fully being embodied in your own essence, there are some characteristics. You are curious. Mm. You're calm. You're clear. Mm. You're connected. You're confident. You're courageous. You're creative and you have compassion and so anything i have to listen to this show so that i can (laughs) get all of those things again because i i think i have a lot of those things i don't know if i have it all and and we don't have them all the time for all the different scenarios and different things that happen in our lives you know and 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 the 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 thing so the thing is like when in childhood from one to seven or eight that's when all these programmings and, and traumas and wounding happen in our life mm. and so what happens is so you have yourself so it so uh, the internal uh, internal family system talks to the point of like almost different parts of us that we have yeah. so when you have when you have a wound that like something happened in your life that you felt if you, that you didn't feel heard or you didn't feel important that could, that's a wound so you have a part of you that is and that can happen today it, that could happen anytime but a lot of the core issues that we have are like were kind of started in childhood and then they yeah. kind of kept keep rewounding through through life but i know women have to be heard yes <laughs> we have to feel heard you have, you have to feel, and seen feel heard feel mm. seen a lot of people don't feel seen you know but so 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 you have a, so when you have this trauma so there's a part of you that was traumatized so that uh dr uh, richard schwartz calls it the the exile the exile because okay. because around the exile we have a part that's called a protector so the protector is protecting that exile so for example if you don't feel oh. if you don't feel heard then maybe right now when you're triggered you feel like you have to yell at people oh so so when you're yelling at people you're not in your essence you're 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 acting you're and projecting. you're coming and you're coming from a protector oh huh Yes. So and so I I'm I'm verklempt. I don't know what to say to this because <laughs> I was think I was projecting and yelling today. So <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> so I'm not coming from my true, true your essence. true essence when you were in your yelling because you're triggered now. You feel like you're not you know whatever. So you have to dig deep. It's like okay, so why was I yelling? Yeah. Like what was inside of me that bothered? You know what was about what was it about the situation? Because it's never about the situation. Like what was it about the situation that I felt triggered? Yeah. It's why never, was it that It's bothered? never about the socks on the floor or about the, the other toothpaste per- what the other person cap said. not on the or the dishes not being done or any or whatever the other person or or yeah. the um the um driver that is the what is the rage driver the, or yeah. what, road rage whatever it is it's never yeah. about all of these things yeah yeah exactly so so, so so then when you act so you go as you're going through life and you're acting in those ways that are just protecting protection mechanisms so you you're acting from protectors you know and we have multiple of them and and, and so those are the those are the parts of your ego and and like i said last time you know like the ego is the it, it's like the the interface between your soul and this 3D world that we live in. And, oh. and so, and so, but because of those traumas and those wounds, then we, the, the, the ego creates these protectors to help you navigate through life in a better way. Oh, so, so it might, your essence doesn't feel heard. So it, your system thinks, what can we do to protect, help her, to, to protect her. her, to help her feel heard? Hey, let's start yelling. 
Oh. You know, and so 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 that's what I find out like how the mechanism. Who work. is this person you're following? Richard <laughs> Schwartz. So I actually work with a therapist who does the internal family system work, and wow. it's amazing. And it, it is amazing. And I don't necessarily I don't do this because I'm obviously not a, a psychologist and I'm yeah. not trained yes. in this. But I do this work myself. But but part of like what I help you know like this vision that I have. Um, and the experience that I have in, in working with those parts of myself, it's it helps me see when my clients and when yes. people in general are coming from parts. So every time you're coming from part, you know, from a part of you that's wounded or from a part of you that's a protector, that is when you're not really getting to the essence of what would make you and really you're, happy. And you're stuck in that block and it's not letting you be and do all those things that you want Your to be and self, do. Your best self, yes. Mm. And, and so because you're coming from a distorted version. And that's why a lot of times the, e- the, the money thing, because the money thing is a lot of, a lot of it is safety. Mm-hmm. You know, and so yeah, safety and, safety and uncertainty. Yeah, because if you, you have money, then you're like you feel safe that even if there's an, a, an a certain situation or situation you don't like, that you can get out. Yeah, but but that's so that you, so you're coming from a protector part mm. of you, but you're not really coming from yourself, and that's why mm. I said it's like, what is it that really sparks you joy? So when you find when you follow the the joy and the lightness. And the spark, that's when you're staying true to your assets. Okay. All right. Well, we ha- on that note, we have to go to one more break. Uh, you can go to FontanaCoaching.com for more information. She's also listed in the Powerful Women Rise directory. You're listening to Powerful Women Revealed right here on 95.9 WATD. Are you getting the support you need to move your business forward? The perfect group for you might just be Powerful Women Rise. We are a motivational mastermind for women who are serious about transforming their businesses and missions. At each meeting, we educate ourselves on topics relevant to the entrepreneur today. And we gain incredible support from a team of professionals with diverse experiences and wisdom. So how do you want to be supported over the next 12 months? Visit PowerfulWomenRise.com to register or get started today. I just can't, I can't decide. And we are back. You're listening to Powerful Women Reveals. We are dancing way too much in the studio today. <laughs> what a great song. Uh, Every Time by LTD. And, you know, I wrote down a couple of notes, like, because he said mixed emotions. Mm-hmm. I can't decide. Mm-hmm. We talked a lot about decision last time. We talked yeah. a little bit about, well, basically a lot about decision, decision. today. Really, yeah. the spiritual decision, any kind of decision. Um you do have a free downloadable toolkit that we did not talk about last time. So this is a dream builder toolkit and mm-hmm. it's based on health, relationships, career, and spirituality. Is there anything else? Yeah, those four main points. Um, I wrote some stuff in here because <laughs> I did this the very first time we interviewed. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh, yeah. So this will be interesting for me to go back and read some of these things. Mm -hmm. Now, um, this is obviously where you start your clients. Yes, that's the first step. And and that helps, you know, health, relationships, um, health and well-being, relationships, vocation and time and money, freedom. Those are the the, the four quadrants of your life. And Mm -hmm. so it's so important to have a clear vision of what it is that you want in each one of those areas because you know we want full spectrum wealth we don't want to be you know have money but not have love or have love but not have you know like feel fulfilled in our vocation full spectrum wealth yeah it's being really healthy because t- when I think of wealth I think of healthy healthy and wealthy in all in- the areas yeah, of your life. So you can, you know, truly live a life that you love, that is fulfilled. And, uh, you know, talking about these old programmings we have, we, it's kind of like a lot of people are not aware of this. We have a lot of programming that you can either have luck in money, but not luck in love. That it's an either or situation, oh, you know, and it, yeah. it is a both and you can have everything you want in all areas of your life. Yeah, there but is no limits there There are are no limits we are our limits it's like they say that the sky is the limit no we actually are the ones who limit ourselves in in basically basically by the way that we think and so you know so it's an important job to really look at our thinking and, and our mindset and everything that all the programs that we have that keeps us stuck and small 
because once we remove those and we once we have and, and all of it goes by you know increasing your level of awareness mm-hmm. and you know one of the key tools that i that i use that i tell my clients to use as well is like a metacognition it's it, which is notice what you're noticing uh, Notice the thoughts that are, are showing up. Yeah, be in your the mind. observer of your own life and of your own thoughts. You know, you have to yeah. guard your mind. Watch your yourself thoughts. from up above somewhere, and watch yourself walk around and drive and do the things in your life, and really be that observer. Mm-hmm. That's a cool position to not just in a picture or a photo, but like really in your everyday life. That's that life. is a very cool thing to do mm-hmm. if we can remember to do it. Yeah, <laughs> throughout the day, <laughs> right? Yeah, because when you do that, it's actually you can you can calibrate the energy that you're coming from if you are observing. And the thing is, no one is perfect. No one is going to be able to do this every second of the day, all the time. But it's just even if you create checkpoints. My coach um, she used to initially when she started working on this, she used handles. In, in terms of like, how are you handling yourself and your energy uh-huh. at the moment? So every time she touched a handle was a reminder to her. Oh, how are you? Hand- how oh, are you like handling the handle life? that you get in your car? So the think handle. about how handles you wore. You know, you touch the handle of the car, like the door, the, the door, door doorknob, <gasps> the cabinets, the handles in the cabinet. Who taught you this? <laughs> One of your coaches? Like, my coach, Mary Morrissey, that's like the tools that she used to like I touching the handle. This. So how are you handling? So this, those are just things, tools that you can use to train yourself to observe yourself and one of the and things how are you feeling you know I, one of the things i'm learning right now in the untethered soul i think we talked about this on the last show mm-hmm. um is that when you close your heart so if you're um mad about something mm-hmm. and okay i'm just gonna close up my heart and not talk to that person and whatever you're really not closing them out of your life mm-hmm. <laughs> you are keeping yourself locked in yes you're creating a cage for yourself pretty much for part of you for part of you yeah isn't that interesting and all you have to do is just open your heart and let everything go through you too I'm learning how to let the energy of stuff go through me Mm -hmm. right and not even if it's happy energy Mm-hmm. Like we want all of the energy to come through us as a human being so that we can be lighter. Yeah. You know, living our experience. Yeah. Everything out comes in through us, but also everything in us should go throughout us and out, you know, because I used to and have if this, it keeps flowing. It's a flow. Yeah. Then you'll then nothing gets really stuck. Exactly. And there's always potential for stuff to get stuck. Yeah. And, but then that, that's when the part of you know, noticing what you're noticing yes. comes in because then if at some point you get stuck, and like I was saying, this is not about being doing it perfectly. It's about improvement. So, you know, mm-hmm. so you just have the awareness. Maybe even maybe today you just remember to check yourself once, but maybe tomorrow you remember two or three times. Yes. And so it's about improvement. All of these baby steps. Yeah. It's important. You can go really far just on baby steps. So what, sure. what, do you have a final thought? We are out of time. Oh, I know. I know. No, I, I, and I love this talk, but it, truly like transformation, it's something that it doesn't happen overnight. It's a practice and it's something that... It's about the journey. It is about the journey. And it's like, and there are so many things that keeps us reverting back towards what we know and what's comfortable to us, you know, and, mm. and one of the reasons reasons why I love helping people sort of through this journey is because it, it, it is immensely valuable to have sort of like a container around your transformation because that's what keeps you moving forward and not really reverting back to what's familiar. Mm-hmm. It's like a structure of support to help you move along. And that's how you can see quantum leap changes in your life. I, I can't even imagine how fulfilled you must be helping people go from A to Z. Yeah. Like, really, I mean, I feel fulfilled working with women entrepreneurs and seeing women progress and stuff, but I'm not nowhere near on the level that you're supporting people. So I can imagine how fulfilled you feel. Yeah, and, and I love this work, but also it is the work that I do with myself. Yes. So in a way... We have to walk the walk. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, you do it for yourself and you help other people and it's everything is aligned for me, which is what I the vision for my life 
you know, 10 years ago, yes. it is what it is that I'm doing today and helping people in this way. So I love it. I yeah. love it. I love you. You're awesome. Oh, this is amazing. Thank you again for being here. You can go to uh, FontanaCoaching.com for more information. I want to leave you with this final quote, and I changed it last minute. So this is Joe Dispenza, and he says, knowledge is power, but knowledge about yourself is self-empowerment. I want to thank you so much for listening today and helping end systemic racism by doing what you can, speaking out, and simply by caring. I hope you will tune in next Sunday after the news at noon. Until then, I'm your host, Nicole Perry. Have a great week. And remember, knowledge is power, and it's what you do with that knowledge that matters. Thank you. Thank you.